Hi there, everyone, and welcome to Paper Wishes Weekly Webisodes. I'm Sarah Newman, and I'm so happy you're joining me for this episode of Saturday with Sarah. Well, today we're playing with the Blue Dream Collection from our friends at Stamperia, which includes pattern papers, rub-ons, chipboard die cuts, and two gorgeous pieces of rice paper. So let's take a look. I'm going to move aside the chipboard just for now. We'll take a closer look at that in a second and we can start with our pattern papers. So the paper pack contains 10 eight by eight double-sided sheets with pattern backgrounds. There's also some scenic imagery. You've also got some cutout embellishments in here. Everything is totally coordinated and absolutely beautiful. So you can see why it's called Blue Dream. Really just some stunning designs in here. This is one of my favorites. And so easy to mix and match and use together. Here are some more of those cutouts. You can see they're patterned on the one side with really quite full imagery. On the other side, they've got some open spaces so you can add in your own customized messages or add in some other elements there too. Now to go along, we also have a set of coordinating rub-ons and the beautiful focals. You've got some florals, seashells, borders, everything is included in here. Now I'll demonstrate how easy these are to use. And in addition, there are instructions included on the package as well. Okay, so back to our package of chipboard die cut embellishments. It's a little tricky to see in the package, so I always like to pull them all out and spread them out so that you can get a bit of a better sense of what's included. There are 47 chipboard embellishments in that package, and you can see some are quite large, others are smaller. We've got a really nice variety of different sizes, shapes, perfect for your card focals, and accent embellishments too. Now, we've also got two sheets of rice paper. So we have the Blue Dream tiles that you see here and the Bougainvillea that you see over here. So rice paper is a lightweight and it's a translucent printed paper. You can easily glue it to your surface to create gorgeous layers and textures. So as you can see, we have a lot to explore today. So much fun stuff from our friends at Stamperia. And I'm so glad that you're here. Come play with us. We can start with this simple card, which shows how easily the various elements come together to create a design that can really work for so many different people on your card giving list. So you can see here, I'm starting out with a focal element from the paper pack. Now this is one of the large cutout elements in here. So let me flip to this and we can see this is the design that I chose. I've got lots of different options there. And what I've done is just simply trim this out with scissors. And then let me bring back in my card. You can see I've got some white scalloped edging going around all four sides of that piece. Now, this is one of my favorite cutting dies from Hot Off the Press. It's their 10 square and scalloped cutting dies and I never put it away. It's always out on my work surface because I love how easily it just adds some dimension around various cutout elements. So this is the die that I used. You can see as I'm positioning it on here that it is not quite fitting around the outside edge of this. So what I've done is simply trim this down inside that white border and then I've die cut a square from white cardstock and I can layer the two together. This portion is popped up on some foam tape, so that gives a little bit of extra dimension there too. So let me scoot this to one side for now. We can keep taking a look at this card. So my background paper is from the paper pack. In the top corner here, you can see this tile design. Well, this is the tiles rice paper, and I've simply torn it and glued it to the background paper. So my background paper is this design right here. You can see the shells down here at the bottom. And then with my tiles rice paper, I've simply glued this right on top. So I think you can see that this is a translucent design. When I flip this over, you'll see all of the um, various kind of veins inside here. It's a little bit like a mulberry paper in that it does have some uh, paper fibers in there 
Now this will give you a beautiful soft tactile effect and gorgeous dimension. And of course, when everything's color coordinated, you kind of can't go wrong when you're adding your rice paper onto your pattern papers. So let me scoot aside these things and we can look at how to add our rice paper onto our pattern paper or onto your plain cardstock if you wish. So what I recommend is that you use a white acrylic glue and the one that I'm using is the Cosmic Acrylic Glue from um, Creative Expressions. This is a great one. And I've also got a jar with some water and brushes inside here. I'm working on my craft mat because that's going to protect my work surface. And I've just put a little puddle of that um, glue onto a piece of plastic just so I can move it out of the way quickly. Normally, I would put it directly onto my craft mat. So to get the torn edge that I have on here, all you need to do is take a damp brush, I'm gonna use this water brush, and just draw a line across the rice paper. And then what you can do is simply pull the two apart really gently to separate that. And you'll get this beautiful, soft, kind of fuzzy edge on there. And that is just a gorgeous look. Now you can also cut this with scissors. After you adhere it onto your cardstock or your pattern paper and it dries, then you can also run it through a paper trimmer too. So a couple of options there. Okay, so I'm going to bring in this patterned design and I'll take a brush that is pretty damp. And I'm just going to add a bit of the dampness from my brush into my glue because you want your glue to be a fairly watery consistency. Now the brush that I'm using is just a plain old paintbrush, nothing fancy. It's got a fairly wide bristles so that I can get some coverage on here. And I'll just apply my glue right onto my pattern paper. And then what I can do is take my rice paper, let's take this little piece here, and pop this down. And I'm gonna kind of smooth this down with my fingers a little bit. This glue will dry clear, so I don't have to worry about any kind of funny edges on there. Maybe come back and add a little bit more glue over here on the very edges. So smoothing out some of those um, feathery bits. And there we go. And you can see how that just adds such a pretty effect really blends into the background paper because those colors work so beautifully together, but it just gives us something really fun and a great way to add some additional dimension to your backgrounds. So then I'm just gonna let that dry and that will take you know anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes. Just kind of depends on the weather where you live and also probably how big your piece is that you're waiting to dry. So as you can see, again, I've got this piece right up here. I glued the two together and then trimmed with my paper trimmer to create a piece that's slightly smaller than the front of my card. And I've also got some seashell chipboard elements here and they're overlapping my background and my focal element. And this really helps to draw your eye into the card focal. Taking advantage of that seashell border on here too, it just adds a really nice effect. And then for my card inside, I have a little strip of pattern paper here. I've got this uh, lar fairly large chipboard die cut element, and then I've also got a sentiment. This is a cutout from the paper pack collection. Okay, so this is a simple way to bring all of these elements together to create a card. Now you can also use these same elements to create non-card projects too. So I have a tag and a bag project, and as you can see, I've got a tag and I've got a beautiful bag that can hold my message, as well as some other things too. There's a little bit of extra room in there. Now to do this, I'm using one of my favorite, one of my other favorite dies from Hot Off The Press, which is the tag in a bag cutting die. So you can see here the two different shapes. There's your bag. There's your tag, run them through your die cutting machine and away you go. So my front piece or the, the bag that I'm working with is actually the reverse side of the cover 
of my paper pack. So you can see this. It's such a beautiful all over design that you can really use this for so many different things. But in this case, all I've done is taken that die, positioned it down, run it through my die cutting machine, and then can fold this up. Now, one thing to keep in mind, because this is the reverse side of the package cover, you're going to get some of the uh, various collaged elements here on the front package for the inside of your bag. So let me show you what I mean. This section right here. So when it's folded up on the inside, you'll be able to see a portion of the cover, which is fine. It looks really nice. And then this is the back. And I've just simply wrapped this with a little bit of jute twine. I have one of the smaller die cut, or excuse me, one of the smaller cutouts from the paper pack here as my focal. Again, some of those seashells tilting in so that it brings your eye to the message as well as the bow on here. And then I've got my tag. Now the tag is also using some of that tiles rice paper. And you've got a couple of different options here. So you can glue the rice paper to this faux wood paper, let it dry, and then die cut the tag shape. You can also die cut the tag shape from pattern paper, then add the rice paper, let it dry, and use scissors to trim off the excess. So it kind of depends on what your preference is and maybe how your design process is as well. Then for the tag, I've also used a strip of pattern paper for the tie and some hunky-dory sparkles as accents. And then back on the bag front, you'll see this little word enjoy here. Well, this is a rub on and I thought we could use this opportunity to take a look at how easy these are to use. Rub ons are really easy to use and they're a great way to add some quick instant color and imagery to your project, whether you're working on a plain surface like this white cardstock or some pattern paper maybe. So let's take a look at this. Now the rub-ons you'll notice have a lot of images packed in here together. You've got lots of value on this pack. Now one thing I do suggest you do before you actually rub on your image onto your surface is to grab a pair of scissors and trim out just the image that you want. It makes it a lot easier to transfer one image rather than trying to be careful to not transfer any of the other images that may be around that. So what I've done is just used a pair of scissors to cut out this floral motif. And when I did that, I've kept the liner on here too. So there's like a white backing sheet. So I'm keeping the two of these things together until I have determined exactly where I want my piece to go and kind of which angle I want it to go at. There are lots of different possibilities, especially with this floral. So I could also say, oh, maybe I want to position this onto a piece of pattern paper, maybe one with some other florals and script, maybe a stripe design that could also be really pretty too. So you've got lots of different possibilities here. I'm gonna move these two aside. I think just for demonstration purposes, it'll be easier to see this on a piece of white cardstock. So what I'll do is kind of fold up, I'm going to crease a little corner of this top plastic piece. That's just to give me something to hang on to. And then I'll pull away that backing sheet and then position this down on my surface. So when I do this, I'm just smoothing it down with my finger. I'm gonna leave this folded piece up a little bit. There's a bit of stickiness to the back of the rub-on, so this is not going to slide around, which is really nice. So then I'll grab a bone folder. Now you can also use um, probably the handle of your scissors or a spoon if you've got one handy, but a bone folder is probably my recommendation for doing this. So this is one of Hot Off The Press's bone folders. And I'm just going to go in gently at an angle with the tip of this, I'm not using the tippy tip, just the angled tip, if that makes sense. And I'll go around all of the outside edges here and across the center. Then grabbing onto my folded up piece, I'm gently and slowly going to pull this up. And I'm kind of walking this around a little bit because if I notice that there's a part of the design that didn't transfer, I can place this back down, grab that bone folder, and just continue along until everything is transferred. 
but it looks like I did an okay job there. So there we go. I've got my beautiful image on here. I love how this looks like it's kind of fading into the background. I think this is just absolutely beautiful. So that's how simple it is to add a rub on onto your surface. And again, could be onto plain cardstock, could be onto a pattern paper, could even be onto rice paper. And I'll show you an example of that in a minute. So with this card here, I'm actually going to start with the inside of the card because I love this design here. Now this is one of the rub-ons, you can see it right down here. And I think that coordinated with this cutout sentiment from the pattern paper pack, it just creates a really pretty and simple effect. So I haven't filled in a whole lot on the inside of the card, but I, I do really like that for its simplicity. On the card front, I have some of the scenery pattern paper, and it's actually this one right here. And you can see in the corner, I've got the portion of the boat, and then down here, I've got my sandy beach. So this is a great way to be able to use just a portion of some of those all over scenic designs. And I've trimmed that down slightly smaller than my card front and inked around it with a little bit of Midas Gold ink, one of my favorites, and then just glued that right down here. And then the focal is a layer of two of the chipboard die cuts. So let me show you these. Here's the bottom portion, and here is the top portion. So it, this area is just barely visible, and I'll show you why, but I wanted to talk about this top piece here. So I've added some foam tape on the back, now this is foam tape strips that I cut in half um, widthwise because I wanted to conserve my foam tape. And you really only need to go around the outside edges here. These are nice and sturdy chipboard pieces so it's not going to do a whole lot of sagging on there. So then what I did is I thought, oh, this would look really nice together to have this creating some depth and um, you can see a little bit of the shading on there. I really liked that. But when I was adding other elements on here, it started to look a little bit too busy. So I took some white vellum and just cut down a small piece, positioned this on here, and then glued my, or foam taped my top element right along the outside edges of the bottom piece. So that creates a little bit of shading and dimension but it's also nice and soft with that background element in there. So that's another option to keep in mind as you're working with some of these various elements. You can always grab some white vellum to add another layer of dimension and kind of mute some things back on there. So then I've also got some cacti here in the corner. I've got a message that has been cut out from the paper pack and I've got a little seagull chipboard piece on here as well as this top element. And then another quick peek at our card inside and you can see how nicely this all comes together. Okay, I've got another card project that I want to share with you. This set was so much fun to work with. I could have kept going and going. Now this card also uses chipboard elements as the card focal. And here I've layered some rectangle scalloped pieces to provide some depth on the card front. So another one of my favorite <laughs> out of the press die cut sets is the 12 rectangles and scalloped cutting dies. So you've got a lot of um, pieces on here. They're all nesting. I'm gonna show you something with this one here in just a second, because that is actually going to be part of our background. So layered onto my card front, I've got a piece of pattern paper, and I was doing a little bit of patching and assembling because I had snippets of various pattern papers, and of course they all go together, so you can glue them all onto your card front, kind of hide some of those seams. So this portion here in our middle ground is actually that bougainvillea rice paper, which has been glued onto just plain white cardstock. I wasn't sure what I was gonna do with it. And I thought, ooh, maybe I'll take this largest rectangle die. Ooh, it's a little bit too big for this piece. So I thought what I could do is just cut a portion of it. So I positioned this down here so that it would be scalloped on the two short ends and one long end. I didn't worry about this top portion here. Ran it through my die cutting machine. And then I had a piece that I could glue down on here. 
and I covered up the top element with a snippet of this blue collage paper as well as just a little bit of leftover scalloped edging that I had from some various other pieces of white cardstock I was working with. So I've got this going along here and that really matches nicely with some of the other scalloped edging that I've got going on here. So there's a lot going on on our background. I've got a pretty full focal element here with some chipboard pieces. This portion is popped up on foam tape for again a little bit more depth. Got our little cat on here and a couple of butterflies too and then our script dazzle to say hello. Then for my card inside I have some more rice paper just glued to white cardstock and then glued inside and I have another layered piece with some rice paper here and I've got a rub on going on over here. This sentiment is a rub on that was applied to white cardstock just cut out and foam taped onto the piece. And then again, another coordinating dazzle message at the bottom. Now our final card project for the day today features a combination of rice papers and rub-ons. So for this section here, this is rice paper. And then I've added the lemons rub-on right on top. And that again, creates a little bit more depth and dimension and just a really pretty tactile card focal and a nice background for yet again another hello message. Got a little chipboard birdie here and some more plants. This beautiful lush really richly patterned paper is my background. I have a strip of uh, leftover paper that I just couldn't put in the recycling bin. I thought it was too pretty so I popped it down there as my border. And then for our card inside, I've got a strip of this beautiful pattern paper. I've got a rub on border, a rub on accent, and again, another script dazzle. And that is our final project of the day today. So many fun ideas and so much inspiration from our friends at Stamperia. There's really so much that you can do with this set. And I had a fantastic time, as I think you can tell. So a big thank you to our friends at Stamperia for these inspiring supplies and a special thank you to you for joining me today. We're really glad that you're here and we're happy you're part of the Paper Wishes family. Do feel free to leave a comment. We love to hear what you think. Each item can be purchased separately and you can see them below. However, we've also bundled them into a creative money saver just for you. For the money saver, just see this webisode on paperwishes.com. And if you're watching us on YouTube, have a look in the description box below this video. You'll find a link that will take you to our Paper Wishes webisodes page and you can see everything I just mentioned. If you enjoyed our video today, we'd really appreciate a thumbs up. It helps people to find our channel. And don't forget to subscribe. We create three to five videos each week, so there's always something fun to inspire your creative spirit.